is a fifth dimension, beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. This video is going to knock your socks off. You're going to want to watch this video, okay? We're going to prove that the Mandela effect is real. 100%. I'm going to put 10 different proofs that are just like you can't refute them, okay? On top of that, I just realized something. I, I was looking for a good intro for my video, and I was thinking, well, obviously, what, what show kind of encapsulates the Mandela effect and I was thinking the Twilight Zone right so I thought that'd be a great intro and then I started thinking when did that show start it's like like 1950 something right and CERN I was remembering CERN was created in the 50s as well I was like wait a second here CERN was created September 29 1954 Twilight Zone was made in October 2nd 1959 okay so I was thinking to myself could this be the elite's way of just putting it in our face? The Twilight Zone being sort of a creation of what they know they can do. They could potentially change what we perceive around us. And we could be in a Twilight Zone. Or a Mandela Effect Zone, I guess you could say, right? I don't know. I was thinking that was kind of interesting. The dates, and I was thinking... Maybe there's something there, too. Maybe this is their way of putting the evidence in front of us, you know, hidden in plain sight, as they say. You've got a real attitude problem, that's why you're a slacker. You remind me of your father when he went here. He was a slacker, too. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. You know, the history is going to change. Okay, you saw back here the year, 1955, right? That's very interesting, the year is 1955. When CERN was created in 1954. Could this be also predictive programming for the ability for history to change? History is going to change. He said, history is going to change. And he went back to 1955. CERN was created in 1954. <laughs> Very interesting. A little bit of predictive programming there. Could this be them predicting that CERN would have the ability to change history? The history of CERN. Remember I pointed out when the show Twilight Zone started. It started in 1959, right? And we have... Uh, Back to the Future, they go back to 1955. So we actually have uh, the history of CERN here. After the Second World War, where to build, they're deciding in 1952. They break ground in 1954. 
European Organization for Nuclear Research is born, September 1954. CERN's first accelerator, the Synchro Cyclotron, starts up on May 11th, 1957. It's very interesting. The proton synchrotron starts up in 1959. That was when the year the Twilight Zone started. They accelerated protons for the first time on November 24th, 1959. Right? When did Twilight Zone first air? October 2nd, 1959. The proton synchrotron accelerated protons for the first time on November 24, 1959. We're talking a month and a half, a little bit over a month and a half apart. World's highest energy particle accelerated with a beam energy of 28 GeV. The PS became host to CERN's particle physics program and provides beams experiments to this day. During the night of November 24th, 1959, the PS reached its full energy. So they were doing testing before this, or was this the first time? Yeah, that was the first time, November 24th. Next morning, John Adams pictured, announced the achievement in the main auditorium. Doesn't he look like him? He's got the, the thick eyebrows. Looks kind of like him. He's got a suit on. Of course, it's black and white. I guess any guy could look the same, right? <laughs> it's just kind of interesting, right? Could there be a correlation there? Okay, so first we're going to start with Forrest Gump. If you're familiar with the Mandela Effect topic, you know that, uh, you or at least remember that Forrest said life is like a box of chocolates. That's something that everyone seems to remember. However, the movie doesn't say that. I can eat about a million and a half of these. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. Okay, so you heard there him say life was like a box of chocolates however i found uh doing some research here on youtube that actually there's some behind the scenes footage where he says what you're expecting him to say Forrest Gump starts as a boy and then he grows to a man who's someone who grew up in the deep south and he's limited in a way by having a very low IQ but he's a very decent man and that's what he is as a character. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, thank you. I found the book Forrest Gump in 1985 and I fell in love with it. I read the first line and the first line of the book is being an idiot ain't no box of chocolates. My mom always said that life is like a box of chocolates. You see? There you go, hearing exactly what you remembered. And this is in the behind-the-scenes footage, not the main movie. But you remember the main movie having it this way. So, obviously, in your memories in the past, this was different. This was not behind-the-scenes footage, but actually part of the real footage for the movie. Okay, we're going to go next to Star Wars. You have Luke. <laughs> Luke, I am your father, as you remember. This is at least what you thought it was. But actually, according to the movie, it's no, I am your father. And actually, what we're going to see here is some evidence that actually, no, it really was Luke, I am your father, in the minds of some of the actors and also some other footage as well. Okay. Let's see. We have this footage, and then we also have... Okay, let's watch this first. This is uh, James Earl Jones. Jokes, I heard that you would tell a joke before every production. Uh, 
yet we had a tradition of telling uh, jokes right before at places, right before curtain. You, the filthier the better. You Always know. naughty, either ethically naughty or right, okay. but sexually naughty. Not yeah. for morning TV. Uh, well, we've got one. Should we, should we do it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. What What does the redneck Jedi say? No, you ask that because I'm a redneck or because I'm Jedi. No, because we're both rednecks. <laughs> okay, but but, but well, the redneck Jedi says. Luke, I am your father and your uncle. <laughs> so you can see right there, he even remembers it as Luke. I am your father. And of course, there's other clips as well. There is one from, I think it's, is it Tommy Boy? Yeah, it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's, here it is. This is from another sh movie. La 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 Luke, Luke, I am your father. La la la. <laughs> Unfortunately, that guy died as well, Chris Farley. Uh, for the third one, we have Interview with a Vampire as you remember it, but of course now it's interview with the vampire. But according to these other broadcasts, no, that's not the case. It was interview with a vampire. And you'd have to ask yourself, how could they get it wrong in this show? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, your host for the 67th annual Academy Awards, David Lehman. You know, someone once said that acting is the enchanted wand that turns words into magic. Thankfully, We've had that person dragged out to the parking lot and beaten. <laughs> I'm talking about words like, I could have been a contender. Here's looking at you, kid. Life is like a box of chocolates. All shining examples of how a few simple words become cinematic legend. Uh, it's another blockbuster year for Hollywood, uh, the motion picture interview uh, with the vampire. Did over a hundred million dollars business, over a hundred million dollars business. Of course now, uh, in New York City, for marketing purposes, that movie uh, was released under the title Bite Me. Um, but the, the, this category has been slightly altered this year, ladies and gentlemen. And um, it, it now goes, let me get this right, um, best original score or performance by a British actor in a fluffy romantic comedy set in the south of England. Oh, cute. Uh, Honey, you're bitter. No, I'm bitter. Not bitter. Not bitter. I'm, 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 I'm not, not, not in the least bitter. I'm just um, interested in the way it's done. And, um, and, and, and the nominees are Elliot, Elliot Goldenthal for Interview with the Vampire. Hi, I'm Neil Jordan, and I'm here to introduce the Interview with the Vampire, a movie about the saddest vampires you'll ever see. I wanted Interview with the Vampire to be a departure. I wanted to, first of all, I always thought the vampire was the interesting one, and I wanted to know what went on behind the scenes. So I wanted it to be a departure. I wanted you to fall in love with the vampire and see things through his eyes. Interview with the Vampire, as uh, every new story, probably had 50 versions. You know that you can do. And, uh, I don't think you're going to find one as solid and as well done and serious with the material as, as the movie that we did. I was sitting one night in my office at home in Berkeley. I was, and as far as I know, became the real hero of Interview with the Vampire. He decided that he was going to get this thing made and he was going to draw all the elements together. I used the books uh, as a reference for me. and. and you know, you have to read them, especially Interview with the Vampire, because it's from Louie's point of view, you have to read it. Okay. <laughs> Should be pretty obvious that all of them said Interview with a Vampire. The woman that wrote the book, these actors, uh, the Oscars, pretty much everyone said Interview with a Vampire. But now it's written, if you just go to IMDb, this is Interview with the Vampire. And it's not just that, you know, you would think, okay, maybe they just somehow changed the pages on the internet so that things were different. But actually, no, you can't say that because if you go pull out the video, if you had purchased it, it will say interview with the vampire. So it seems very, very odd that if we have somehow stepped into another dimension, as, you, as uh, the Twilight Zone says... Um, why is it we still have these 
clips that say interview with a vampire. Why do we still have Luke, I am your father, from James Earl Jones? And why do we have uh, a behind-the-scenes footage from Forrest Gump where he says life is like a box of chocolates? Okay? It just seems a little strange, right? Of course, we're not done. We're going to go through 10 of these, and every single one of them have these kind of evidences. Okay? With Fruit Loops. Let's see here. This is happening with all kinds of different products right now. Okay, let's see if I can find where it starts. Fruit Loops Nutrition. See, everybody searches it as Fruit Loops this way, right? And he's going to show clippings from newspapers. <laughs> Turn off the volume here. It's very interesting how many newspaper clippings says Fruit Loops spelled F R U I T. Most of them being in the 90s. So perhaps this is when this occurred. And we're going to show some exact dates when things happened as well, by the way. Okay. I'm going to show you an established date within months of when one of these effects took effect. So you can see here, obviously, uh, a lot of different uh, newspapers and internet archives have it written uh, Fruit Loops as you would expect it to be written. You can see there's a lot more. I'll, I'll link to these videos in the description so you can check them out. Obviously, there's a lot of different evidences here. It just keeps going on and on. There's a lot of them. And it keeps going and going and going. So I think you get the idea. There's a few. Okay, now this one I just learned about today. Smokey the Bear. I thought this was kind of interesting. Apparently he's not called Smokey the Bear. He's called Smokey Bear. But I did find a clip where he's called Smokey the Bear. Okay. This is an old clip. This is from... I think it says here, didn't it? What year? Once there was a little boy. Oh, I think it's 1960. Yeah, it's 1960. Okay, let's start here. Brown with mud and overflowed its banks. This set him wondering where all the mud came from. I'll tell you. Okay, so you heard that he was called Smokey the Bear there. However, that's about the only clip I could find where he's called Smokey the Bear. Okay. All the rest of them say Smokey Bear. This one starts in here. The song. He's a bear? He's a bear. A real bear? Smokey bear! Wild by the nature and the sun is up to us to be. Okay. <laughs> I never heard him called Smokey Bear. That's why I thought it was kind of interesting. I have another few here I reference once this thing kicks in and I can get to it. Okay, let's try this. There was one in there. There's one over here too. 1938. Let's get started a little early. Forest fires. Hello. My name is Smokey Bear. And this is. 
Okay, so you see there, obviously, Smokey Bear. But that first one said Smokey the Bear, and it's from 1960. I think it started slightly sooner than that. And I think it was the 1950s. Was it the 40s or 50s? First Smokey the Bear. So there are some references to Smokey the Bear still. It's kind of interesting. Now, this one, this next one, number six, is pretty crazy. Okay, Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Obviously, a lot of people remember it being Mirror Mirror on the Wall. However, uh, you know, a lot of people couldn't find any, I guess, footage for it uh, or, or evidence that it was Mirror Mirror on the Wall. But here we go. We have a woman that's showing one of her books. Okay where she goes through it and shows that it actually says uh, Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Actually, she shows two things. So she has Snow White, Seven of the Dwarves here. And she shows the date. Where's the date at? Okay, so here she goes. 1973. So she's showing us from 1973, and then, let's see here, 1973, okay, Queen had a magic mirror, she kept asking, she looked into the mirror and asked the same thing. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. So it says it, and it doesn't just say it once, okay? It says it also another time in the same book. Let's see here, where's the other one? I think it's here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, if I can get it to pause in a good spot. There we go, mirror, mirror, on the wall. Again, same mirror, mirror, on the wall. This is from 1973. So clearly, Disney did put out uh, books that at least said Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Although the movie says Magic Mirror on the Wall. And that's not it either. So you, she also put out a second video. Apparently she collects a lot of Disney stuff. And she pulls out... Um, let's see here. She pulls out some sort of... Uh, I don't know what this would be, a jar or something, and, or no, a glass. Disney Villains was the copyright, I can't even see it. It says Mirror Mirror on the inside of it, okay? Mirror Mirror. So clearly, there was things that Disney put out. Perhaps these books weren't changed? but other things were changed. See, that's what's so interesting about this is you'll have these little evidences that it was that way. You know, some behind the scenes footage, maybe some random book didn't say Magic Mirror on the Wall. There's this one book that still says Mirror Mirror on the Wall. It's very interesting. And of course, the one that, one of the older ones is the Baron Stein or Baron Stain Bears. And I wanna hit on that one next. Okay, and actually there's a lot of evidence that it was Baron Stein, S-T-E-I-N. And on this one, it was at the 219 mark. Okay, here we go. And so I use the Internet Archive and 80scartoons.net, February... 17th, 2001, was the first snapshot they took of this website. Okay, so what he does is he goes ahead just a little bit, and he shows how it changes. So this is a snapshot of this particular website, 80scartoon.net, uh, February 2001, February um, 17th, 2001, Okay. Now watch this. Check this out. It says Baron Stein there, right? He's going to show a, another snapshot. 
Yeah, here we go. Okay, where did it go? Let's just let them talk here. They're in Stain Bears. Okay, let's... February 17th, 2001. The next one here, April 7th, 2001. Also Baron Steen Bears. Right, April 7th, 2001. So we'll go forward to the next one. Aha! Baron Steen Bears. Okay, so when it was August 5th, 2001 is when it changed. On, on the snapshot for the website, 80scartoons.net, but back before that, April 7th, it was Baron Stein Bears, 2001. So we're talking between April and August, it changing to Baron Stein. And it, it's not just this one uh, title on this one page of 80scartoons.net. It's actually every instance of this Berenstein or Berenstein word on the website changes between these two dates because he actually goes through and shows where the same thing occurred here, where it's Berenstein and then it becomes Berenstein on the exact same. All the words just change. Okay, so that's very interesting snapshots of website history where it shows the change happening in 2001 for this Mandela effect okay and actually there was another thing here I had let's see what was this one let's pause the sound there this one starts at 620 where is it at yeah, this obviously you've probably seen this picture. TV Guide, Berenstein, the book Berenstein. That's a very common one. But we have lots of websites that have it Stein. While the book says Stein right next to it, which I think is very interesting. You have a lot of these type of effects where everybody puts it as Stein. And then the book right next to it, the picture has Stein. Right, exact same events, exact same details. So that's basically it for the Berenstein. Of course, there's other videos here on YouTube, but I thought those sort of show the, the evidence of it changing. Now for number eight, we have Chick-fil-A. And actually, I believe this one changed as well. I thought it was kind of an interesting one. Where I think it was C H I C as this guy thinks. Place many times when it was C H I C dash F I L dash A. And it wasn't windows on the side of the building like there is now. I'm gonna go have a talk with these guys. I've had some uh, people say that they'd like to see me get crazy and tell people I'm from a different reality where things have changed, things were different. He's in Chick-fil-A asking the manager questions. Question for you. Yes. There's a lot of people that are confused about your name, the, the name of the company. Chick-fil-A. So, did you guys go through name change? You did not. As far as you know, the company never changed the name. Nope. This is going to sound crazy, but for the longest time, I would drive by Chick-fil-A on the way to the gym. Mm -hmm. It was spelled C H I C dash F Y L dash A. And I swear to you, not that's gonna sound crazy. I just had to come in and ask you guys yeah. because so many people are remembering it that way. Okay, so that he's he's asking the manager and she doesn't rem she's not aware of this. Okay. And then here we have some evidences. newspapers and other uh, images online it's very interesting some people remember it IK rather than C
And it just keeps going like that. And I remember it being C-H-I-C-F-I-L-A as well. I don't remember what, I don't remember when it changed because you don't pay attention to this stuff like this generally. You're just like, oh, okay, it's I maybe I just thought it was spelled wrongly before or something. I don't know when it changed, but I do remember when it was this way. And I guess for some it was C H I K. I don't know what to think about that, but I don't remember it ever being C H I K. I just remember C H I C. And then it seems like recently I noticed that it was C H I C K. So, but there's lots of newspaper clippings. There's a lot of different images. There's uh, people selling on eBay that spell it incorrectly. Uh, lots of people. And then, of course, there's the Volvo logo. The first time I saw that someone pointed out to me that the Volvo logo had changed, I was pretty shocked at what I saw because I used to work as a, a mechanical engineer at um, a company that created semi trucks, okay? And Volvo is well known for creating semi trucks, or maybe maybe for some they don't know, realize that they think they maybe just make cars. They actually are very big into making semis as well. I used to work at International, or it's called also Navistar, and we had in the back uh, all the competitors' semi trucks, and there was like uh, several Volvo trucks, and we would go out there regularly and look at them, and. I know the I, I know that the logo was not that way. I would have remembered something like that. It's very blatant. Okay, and I saw I saw this video where this guy covers. I'm trying to pause it if it ever pauses. Apparently, I can't pause it. Pause. Okay. One forty-eight. Let's see what we got here. When was this Volvo logo changed? Like when did when did the arrow get put in here? From the very beginning? Are you kidding? But it's always had the arrow. Yeah, the arrow's in it. Going through the Volvo. Okay, so they were saying that it's always had the arrow, but at one time the arrow used to be inside of it. Okay. And this guy, of course, he can't believe it. He, the guy's going around asking these questions. Can't believe it. But he found some interesting uh, sketches from design artists, uh, Volvo design artists, that have it the way I thought it was, which is very interesting considering it was the design artists. They would obviously know how the logo would be. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I used to work at a semi-truck, medium-duty slash semi-truck uh, company, and the artists are well ac acquainted with the logo on, on whatever company they work for, okay? They're not going to screw this up. So I thought it was kind of interesting it didn't have the arrow on the artist's sketch, the guys who design the designers. So there's some sketches from other people as well without the Okay, for number 10, we're going to be covering Mandela, Nelson Mandela himself, or they named the whole effect after, and his death in prison. And here we have George Bush saying that Nelson Mandela died. Okay, so I thought this was an interesting proof in of itself. I thought an interesting comment was made, and somebody said, I heard somebody say, no, where's Mandela? Well, Mandela's dead because Saddam Hussein killed all the Mandelas. He, he was a, a brutal tyrant that divided uh, people up and, and split families, and people were recovering from this. So there's a psychological recovery that is taking place, and it's hard work for him, and I understand it's hard work for him. So, I mean, if Mandela never died, Bush would have never said that. He would have never said that all the Mandelas are dead. He was playing off the concept of him knowing that Mandela was dead, and he's making his speech off that fact and making his principle about 
those who are Mandela's are dead as well. So I thought that was a very interesting proof that a video proof of the president saying it. Okay, so we have, I mean, a lot of these examples are very, they're very in your face. The Forrest Gump one, I mean, they actually have some background evidence, some uh, behind the scenes evidence of him saying life is like a box of chocolates. Okay. And interview with a vampire. There's several, even the Oscars themselves, they would not be getting the title wrong to a movie at the Oscars. Okay. It just seems really ridiculous to assume the woman that wrote the book on the topic that they made the movie off would get the title wrong that um, the Oscars, more than one actor, uh, would get the, the title wrong. And then there were several other clips there as well that said interview with a vampire. And in newspaper clippings and uh, for Fruit Loops, and uh, it just seemed interesting to me that you can actually find evidence that it was the other way, whether it be images, video footage uh, from television or... Uh, newspaper clippings or whatever it might be and I think that gives irrefutable evidence that there indeed is some sort of effect that is really occurring here